Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I have got another video for us looking at um, our junk journal idea book. So the premise of this series is to make a book that helps us remember all kinds of ideas that we can use in our junk journals. So whether that's making pockets or um, hidden journaling spots, things like that. So um, I did a bunch of flips and flaps. So today I am going to share some ideas with you on how to do several different um, ways of doing a gatefold in your journal and then how you can use those. So the first idea I'm gonna show you is the basic, easiest, simplest gatefold. And it literally just opens like that, right? And it looks like a little gate. I used a, a label to close it. Um, you don't even have to honestly have anything on there to close them if you don't want to. So this is a really simple one. So we're going to do it first. So you can make these really any size that you want, but I will give you the measurements of the paper I'm using. I, um, this is a, just a digital paper. And after I cut the white strip off, and then cut it in half. This is what I ended up with for this particular one. So it is seven and three quarters by five. Okay, now you can, you know, find your center point if you want to, and then fold to the center point, and then your gate fold um, is going to be perfect. I'm eyeballing mine. Again, you can make these any size. So I'm just kind of showing you if you just want to fold it <laughs> and be done, you can. Now, again, we could have figured out what is the center point on our piece of paper, and we could have marked it and folded in. For this size piece of paper, I ended up folding these at approximately um, one and three quarters and five and three quarters. So anyway, I think it looks good. And, and honestly, you're done right there. <laughs> Gate fold. Now, I like the idea of inking it up, decorating it. We could put a pocket inside, could do a belly band, you could do a pad of little journaling papers, things like that. But one of the fun things about doing a variety of gate folds in your journals is then how you choose to attach them, right? So um, I could put this, you know, kind of in the corner of a page and we could add glue to these two sides. And now I have a large tuck spot, right? And I have my gatefold that opens maybe for some additional journaling spaces. I could add glue to three sides and leave a tuck spot on this side or at the top. So there really are so many ways to do that. Since this one looks a little bit nicer, this is the one I'm going to put in my journal. And I think I am going to, see if I can find, find a marker and I'm going to write here um, gatefold ideas and then I'm going to go ahead and glue this one down to just make that big tuck spot so um, I'm going to add glue to this edge since I want it in the bottom left hand corner in the bottom. Okay, very easy peasy. All right, now let's take the same idea, but this time we're going to have the flaps on the gatefold angled. It's, it's easy, um, not hard at all. So you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna take your paper, and um, fold it in. And then, let me let me get my Distress Ink to make this easier, hopefully, for you to see on camera. Now, I do think the gate folds, by the way, look nice when you have you use double-sided paper. Um, but if you don't mind having just white 
um, on one side, that's okay. One of the ones I'm going to do is using a one-sided piece of scrapbook paper, and, um, and it looks just fine. But I do like when I print it on both sides. Okay, so we've got it closed, and then on each flap, you're just going to fold it in to the crease line. And because we're going to chop these off, it, it's better to do them both the same. I mean, you literally can come all the way to the crease line if you want to or back off just a touch. And then I'm going to cut these off with that little flap on this side. We'll save that for something else, but you don't want to leave the little folded piece. So cut cut it off with the little triangle. Whoops, and it helps if you cut straight. <laughs> okay, looks so cute, doesn't it? Um, now, again, there's lots of different closures for gate folds, and I am trying to show you a couple of different ones as we go. The one I did on my sample, I also put a cute little butterfly on there, is I just used some larger, whoa, some larger, what are these called, brads, and just left them. You could cover them up on this side, but I put them on loose enough that there, there's just enough of a lip to put my twine, twist my twine through there, and it's not hard at all to do that. Now, you could also punch some circles and then put the brads on and we'll do that for our sample. We'll just do that for the sample this time. Let me find a scrap of paper that I guess I could use here. I kind of wanted it to stand out a little more but we'll just use this. So I'm using my tiny tinier circle punch and I'm gonna punch two circles. And if you want them to be thicker, punch some with just a plain piece of cardstock, and you can build them up so they're a little bit heavier duty. I'm not going to do that just for my idea journal, um, but you could do that. And I hope that made sense. Just punch out more circles and then glue them together to make it more like a coin or a medallion in thickness. And then grab your little eyelets. I'm not sure where my paper piercer is. So I am going to use a needle and just kind of decide where you want it. I'm trying to center mine approximately um, centered here. I think I'm up just a touch. The next one, it'll just be important for me to align it with this one. This will show you two different ways this can look. Okay, it's that easy, but it looks cute with the little circle, doesn't it? Now, for this one, I'm gonna pay attention and try to match it up. I hope I'm on camera for you guys to see. Back it this way just a little. Okay, I think it looks good. Hold it, poke a hole in the center and then we'll put our brad in so um i think what i came up with for the video today was just four easy gatefold ideas but i'm sure there's lots of others um if you guys like the ideas leave me a comment let me know give me a thumbs up please <laughs> okay i appreciate it i appreciate your support of my youtube channel and my my silver sparkles business. So thank you guys. Okay, and then you just need some ribbon or twine or something that will fit up under here. And this time I want it to go up under that paper circle. I do tend to do at least one little tie to tie that one end on. They don't usually come apart, but there. I know it's not going anywhere now. And then we will just do, what is this, like a figure eight? There we go. It looks cute. You can wrap it as much or as little as you want. And I am going to tie a knot on this end to help me know which end to grab and to keep it from fraying since this is the end I'll be pulling on. You can tie a knot on the other end too if you want it to be symmetrical. 
sometimes I'll even cut the other tail pretty short so that I don't get confused on which one I want to grab. But if you like them to look similar, of course you can do that. Now on all of these, I haven't taken the time like to add pockets on the inside or other embellishments, but of course don't, don't just stop with the basics if you want to um, dress your journal up. I like both of these. They're basically the same idea, but super cute. Again, depending on how we um, glue them down will give us lots of options. I was hoping I could get two of these on a page. And just to do that, not that I would, you know, saying you have to do this, I'm going to chop mine off. It's cute. It's a little short now. Let's see if I can get the two on the page. I can. All right, just so that I can see the two different closure styles. And I'm going to make this one have a tuck spot. I'll leave this side open for this one and we'll leave this side. So I'm gonna hold it by the side I wanna keep open and I'm gonna add the glue to the other three sides. There we go. And I'm gonna put it kind of close to the edge to bring it down so the other one will fit. I love these and it really, all right, and then I'm gonna leave this one open on this side. Um, you know, it really can make an, a really big impact on a page, I think, having one of these. And it'll be a great place, like I said, if you do want to do more, you know, like journaling or, or maybe some thoughts that you only want to look at if you intentionally open it up in your journal. So there we go. All right, so there's three. And then really this is the same one. And then I've got... A couple more for us so let me show you the next one using that same size of paper I just think this one turned out so cute it just opens like this and again I'm sure I would have like a piece of journaling paper a pocket something in here but I just think that looks so impressive and it'll lay nice and flat when it's in the journal. Um, it's just got that little bit of a pop-up. If that's bothering you, you know, you could glue these down. They don't have to have that effect. It would just open then like this. Um, I guess you could also stick it, stick more Velcro on there, but I like it. I don't mind it popping up because I know then when it's inside, it's going to smush down. Okay, so this is a pretty easy one too. We're going to use the same size piece of paper and um, we're going to come over an inch. I'm going to go ahead just to make sure I do this correctly. I'm going to score mine. I'm just using my grid line. So one inch on this side and then let's do one inch from the other side and we'll fold those over. Okay, so fold and fold. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just eyeballing mine to get it to the center. So I'm okay if it's off by just a smidge. Now, and see, now it opens. If you folded it this way, you could do that. And it looks like just kind of a regular gatefold. And then you could have some pockets. In fact, our next one, our large one, we're gonna do with some tuck pockets inside. But I really liked this one with kind of the fancy fold on the outside. Now, to make the closure look the way mine does, you need a square. And let me remind myself the size of the square I did. I did a two inch by two inch square. So, I think I'll use, well, do I want something completely different? Okay, I'll do something completely different like I did with the other one. So let's cut out a two inch by two inch square. Now again, depending on if you're using the same size paper I am, you may want yours, your square a different size. I like mine 
coming almost to the edge this way. So then I'm gonna cut it at a diagonal so that I now have the two triangles, okay? Now my original one, whoo, I did ink around and you certainly can ink. I'm not going to right now on camera, but I inked all my edges in my square to make it pop nicely. And then all we're going to do is we are going to glue this to these two flaps. So you want to be careful not to get your glue too far to that little corner of the triangle. You guys can see that. And I'm going to, again, kind of estimate where I think the center is. And I'm bringing it right up to the fold. And I would just make sure, right, that I didn't glue it down. And I didn't. And then same thing on this one. Don't get it too close to the point of that triangle. Here we go. Fun, fun. All right, there we are. So cute. Now, and again, the more you work on it and you crease it, um, the better it'll do. I printed on my kind of go-to cardstock, which is a 90-pound weight. Um, it's not really, really thick, but it does have some sturdiness to it. Um, all of the supplies and my favorites and things that I use are on my Amazon storefront, which will be linked for you in the description. Um, but you could use even a probably a lighter weight paper if you wanted to, if you didn't want it to pop up quite as much. And then I need another circle. And I kind of hate to, I hate to, to punch in that paper. So I'm gonna do this one where it won't have quite as much contrast. This is a one and a half inch circle. Let's see. Oh, that looks cute. It's just a different part of the um, design and it's got a little more white to it. So we'll just use this side. And you know, you could put a word on here. You could put other labels. Um, you can really go to town on this one. Now I'm going to glue just half of the circle, probably not even all the way to the half, um, close to it. And then I'm going to center it, but I don't want to glue this closed. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm just going to use a Velcro dot to close it. So it's easiest if you just open it up and stick it to the side and then stick it down. I will say um, these gatefold ideas too, if you want to just make a quick card for somebody, um, I think they look impressive. So you could just fold your paper, put a greeting, happy birthday, thinking of you, whatever, thank you. And then if you have more neutral writing paper inside, you know, you could write your message. You could also put a gift card in there if you added a pocket. How cute would that be? I bet for Christmas that would be really cute as a gift card holder. You could even chomp it down and make it a little different size. That would be so cute. All right, so we're going to add one of these at least to our gatefold ideas. Let me get my marker. And gatefold ideas. Well, oh, that's not how you spell ideas. Okay. Um, it doesn't really matter which one I put in because I think they're the same. This one might be cute to glue to the top and the bottom and make it like a pass through. Um, you know, I don't know. There's lots of different ways we could do this one. Why don't I, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it kind of to this side and leave it open over here. That's what I'm gonna do. It's not, this isn't a very wide one, so I don't really wanna leave it open on the top. Then you'd have to have something really skinny in there. Okay, we're gonna go to this side and glue it down. And like I said, when we close our journal, it's, it's really okay. All right, cute, right? All right, last idea that I have for you actually uses a piece of um, scrapbook paper because I wanted 
12 inches to work with. So let me show you the, pro, or the example that I made. And I didn't do a lot of decorating on this one, but um, these, I haven't glued them down. These are gonna be pockets on the inside. And this was to remind me where we're scoring. So let me get my scoreboard out really quick, just to make it go easier. And we are gonna score, let me remind myself, at one inch, so score it at one inch, three and a half inches, eight and a half, This just makes this one easier because it is quite a bit longer, and 11. All right, so one, three and a half, eight and a half, and 11. And then we're gonna fold on all those score lines. My little scoring tool popped out of the scoreboard. I'm gonna have to pick it up in a minute. Okay, so this is gonna become a pocket. And hopefully, if I did the measurements right, this is going to fold right at the center. Yay, it worked. <laughs> That's why using a 12 by 12 piece of paper is wonderful. Now this one's a little bit larger, but how cute, right? Um, so before we go any further, I didn't do this on the original, we're gonna glue our pockets down. So just a bead of glue the top and the bottom. And then when I'm getting glue all over my mat, glue this one down, same way. Now this one I think would lend itself to a variety of, of closures. This one would be cute. Um, now what I did with the this one is I just punched out a little label and did a Velcro dot and it's done. But this one, I think it would be fun to do a ribbon. And the way we can do that is attach a ribbon when we put it down into the journal and bring it this way and tie a bow. Now, if we're gonna do that, we probably wanna use a fairly thin ribbon. I wouldn't use anything you know too big and chunky. Um, but that'll be cute. And of course, we may even though this is a pretty floral, we may wanna decorate it a little bit. So let me get back over here. I'm gonna put this one on this page. So again, you know, like add a little label. I'm not doing a ton of decorating in my idea book, but to hopefully get you guys saying, oh yeah, that does look interesting, Pam. <laughs> Let's see. No. Oh, I saw some more butterflies that I did as well. Let's see if this butterfly would look cute or not. It almost looks like a moth. We'll put it down too, just for funsies. And again, this is one where it was a single-sided scrapbook paper, so you are gonna see the white, but again, we could put a piece of um, neutral, that's not as white journaling paper. We could do some pockets there. I like having these little tuck spots. Um, find something to tuck in there, you know? Just do little strips or something. Um, tiny tags will fit. Other little pieces of ephemera maybe that you wanna keep. I think this is gonna be too wide, but that you wanna keep to decorate your journal with, right? How cute. There we go. All right. I'm not gonna leave those labels in there because I'm gonna wanna use them. Okay, let me find us a piece of ribbon and show you how to do this. And I'm trying to think of where I might have some thin ribbon. Hmm. <laughs> I have this set a friend gave me. Not quite sure where it came from, but it was in a little gift basket she made. If you're watching, Kathy, thank you. Um, look at that, how cute. Okay, I just haven't used it yet. And I think today would be a great day because I think the the browns, I'm getting ready for fall, so I've been getting out a bunch of my fall things, um, will go well with this floor paper. Ooh, and it is, it's nice and thin. Okay, that way it won't take up as much bulk when I tie a bow around it. So I don't know exactly how long I need this to be, so I'm not cutting it yet. I want it to come all the way around and I wanna be able to tie a cute little bow. 
without adding too much bulk. So let's see. And then I'll show you how to how to glue it down so it doesn't go anywhere. I don't think I need the tail quite that long. So let's come this way. I'm gonna try it one more time. I don't wanna, I'd rather make sure and cut once than cut it too short and and then have to start all over or you know leave it way too long. Even if I have a little scrap of ribbon though, you know, guys, I'm gonna cut it about right here and then we'll center it. Um, you know me, I will save every little tiny piece of ribbon there is, but um, I do try to not be wasteful. Okay, so what, what did this end up being? This ended up being, that's 22, 23 inches of ribbon, okay? Now, a couple of thoughts. Now this one, I'm not gonna leave a tuck spot because I am doing this ribbon kind of closure. If I did a different closure, I might even leave this one open at the top, but I'm not gonna worry about trying to get my ribbon all stuck in there. All right, I do want to find the center, get it even. All right, close enough. Now, I think I want mine a little to the top. You could, of course, center it if you want to. This is where you could use a Fabrifix glue. I um, am not gonna take the time to let that dry while I'm on camera, so I'm just gonna use a little piece of score tape, which will be just fine for this. I'm gonna put it approx put it where I want it, and I'm again just kind of trying to get it somewhat straight and go somewhat quickly. Okay, so then we will glue this down, and then I'll use my wet white glue to glue it to the journal. All right, cute. It's gonna be so cute. All right, now you could use your score tape. You could use some Fabrifix across the ribbon. If this is a journal I was making that I was going to give as a gift or sell or something, I would definitely not just use my wet white glue like this. I would add some Fabrifix or something on here, but this is just my idea book for me. It's, it's not going to go anywhere. It's sandwiched in here and it's definitely stuck to the back of this um, piece without a problem, but there we go. I would probably take a little more care with my adhesive if I was going to send this out into the world. <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna burnish that down, make sure that glue is all spread out. I don't have, I haven't made a mess. All right, and then we're gonna just tie her up. And we'll see how bulky it looks when I go to close the journal. I don't mind my journal sometimes getting nice and chunky, but I know a lot of people really want things to be really flat. And if that's the case, you know, do a different closure because the ribbon is going to add some bulk with this knot here. Okay. Cute. I could probably do a little bit better job. So you can see, you know, it's adding some bulk, but I'm okay with it. I think these are so cute. And now we have one, this is basically the same. So two, three, four ideas. And in fact, I might even just one, two, three, four. I'm gonna do gatefold, gatefold ideas, four options. Because when I look at this six months from now, I may not realize I have more than just these, these ideas on this page. Okay, cute. I hope you like it. I hope you will make some. Add these to your idea book and then use them in your projects and journals. Again, this would be cute. I mentioned the card idea. But imagine if you did, real quick, I'll show you what I'm thinking. Imagine if you did um, just kind of a regular size card that you just use a half a sheet of paper and you're making somebody a card, but then you layered like this on top or one of these on top. So you have this happening and then you open it up and you have your card inside. That would be so cute. So give that some thought. Um, I think there's lots of ways to use these in our crafts. Until next time, I hope everybody has a great day and thanks again for all your support.